blood riders of the Dothraki and Essos pledged their blood and lives to their call as constant companions, bodyguards, and lieutenants. A blood rider's oath is unbreakable, and they obey their lord even unto death. Serving Khal Drogo as individual leaders or riding with their call on the field are Kaholo, Hago, and Kotho, each a skilled and deadly warrior easily besting ten times their number. Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming, my name is Brian, and in this video we're going to be going over the Targaryen Heroes 2 box, which was recently released, or yet to be released in the US, uh, for A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. So the box set comes with four unique sculpts, and between them they can uh, be configured into one unit, or they can be broken up into uh, small attachments for other units in your army. So the uh, unit itself, the uh, Drogo's Blood Riders, uh, this is a character unit that can only be fielded with Khal Drogo, and he has to be attached to the unit. So at current, he the only way you can actually field this unit is by running Khal Drogo as your commander, because he has no other version to speak of just yet. Uh, in addition, as I said, there are four unique sculpts in here, and in the little fluff blurb, there are only three that are called out. That's because Kotho, Koholo, and Hago are part of... Uh, Khal Drogo's Blood Riders. I think it's his Kalasar. I, you know, if you're a fluff bunny, uh, you can leave it in the comments that I might have messed that up. But <clears throat> the fourth rider is Rikero, who didn't become a Blood Rider until uh, Daenerys just kind of like took over. So that's interesting. Uh, but we can get to that a little bit later. So let's take a look at the rules and see what we have in this unit. So first we can take a look at the unit itself. For 8 points we get a cavalry unit that is speed 6. They hit on 3s with their uh, with their melee attack, their Dothraki Iraq, uh, and it's 7-6. So that's a pretty decent uh, decay for uh, a melee focused unit. Now here's the, the kicker. They have a 3 plus defense save and a 5 plus morale. These guys are hard to shift and this is the kind of unit I think a lot of us have been waiting for in the Targaryen like atmosphere uh, in terms of mounted cavalry because these guys are tough as nails and they really aren't going to get shifted very far with that really uh, low morale stat. They do bring the order war cry so at the start of a friendly turn this unit can perform a morale test which at 5 plus they're likely to pass and uh, on a success you target one enemy within long range they become panicked and vulnerable. They also have the cavalry rule, which we're all very well familiar with, but they also have fueled by slaughter. So after this unit completes a melee attack, if the defender suffered any wounds, uh, this unit restores one wound plus one wound for each of the defender's destroyed ranks. So Warcry itself, I feel like is one of those things in this game right now that's becoming so pivotal. Uh, you know, uh, Cool Mini or Not has kind of come out and said, or at least the developer side of it, has said that like we're trying to lower the lethality so you're not like likely to wipe a unit out in one go i think that with the um addition of a lot of units having war cry or a lot of factions having access to war cry that kind of makes that a little bit easier especially with this unit having like seven attacks that hit on threes when they're when they're charging and re-rolling of course uh but being able to use your order to panic and vulnerable something means that you're likely to get a lot of wounds through and then with fueled by slaughter in this unit it means that they're going to stick around for a really good long time and this is a unit you do want to stick around because they will 100 percent have your commander in it so absolutely we can't talk about this unit without talking about cal drogo and we're just going to hit his attachment right now um, he does bring the expert duelist rule so uh, right now it's pretty wonky the attacks always gain plus one wound but you could also decide to choose one infantry attachment on a defender's unit, and on a three-up, you just destroy that attachment. It's a really good ability, uh, and, and it's nice to have it on a unit that's so aggressive. They also get Iron Resolve, so they get plus one to panic test rolls. So for panic, they become morale four, which is pretty intense, and they suffer neg one wound from failing panic tests. So if you're, if you're hoping to shift these guys off of panic, even with a couple modifiers, outside of maybe stacking an intense amount, there's a good chance that they're not going anywhere considering that Khal Drogo ends up making them that much harder to shift due to panic. I do think I need to take a minute just to talk about some of Khal Drogo's cards. It's not that he has a ton of synergy with the unit um, through his commander cards. It's more so that they just do stuff, and that's what his uh, cards allow them to do is just the stuff they want, right? So Assault Orders is a good example of just not synergistic, but just really good. Um, Khal Drogo, when his unit gets targeted with this one, 
you just get to make a charge action right away with it and that's pretty legit this is against a call drogo focused list i think your opponents are going to want to try to take the uh swords position on the tactic zone as often as they can so this allows you to kind of swipe out one of their tactic zones that they might be shooting for through the rest of the game and just putting a really cool ability on this like i'm thinking about lannisters you know taking the swords from you and then you responding in kind by taking the the coin or the crown and then you're kind of messing with the things that they're bringing along so just a, a good example of you know blood riders are good it's a good unit to use with this because like getting that free charge you want to be able to charge with the best possible unit on the table that you've got and uh call drogo's blood riders oft more often than not are probably going to be your best unit for targeting with uh extra melee uh output Ride by attack, I will say, is probably not something you want to put on Khal Drogo's unit. They're much better off, you know, charging. I mean, you can do this if you have to, like if there's a really good reason to do it. But they have a really valuable activation, and I really wouldn't want to waste it with uh, ride by attack unless I'm needing to get into position somewhere with these guys 18 inches away. And uh, and then, um, you know, repositioning them while still being able to get a little bit of effort out of them through the the extra wound the extra wounds you'd cause from ride by attack so Adravat is a really good one for them because i think that uh just to remind you this this one triggers when call drogo's unit activates you target one enemy in long range and attach this card to them until the end of the round and then while attached melee attacks on the enemy gain critical blow and if the enemy is destroyed you gain one victory point and then if it's if the card's removed by the end of the round and the enemy's not been destroyed your opponent gains that instead so with the Blood Riders, they are just so efficient and deadly that uh, with Adravat, I have a very difficult time thinking that you ever will not be able to wipe the unit that this targets unless your opponent's doing some shenanigans. But as long as you pick your targets right and you do it at the right time, I almost feel like Adravat is going to be a guaranteed two points every game because you'll, you'll pr more likely than not hit them. And, uh, well, hopefully you're hitting them and uh, you should be able to just wipe those units pretty easily. And lead by example is more of a buff card for another unit. Um, it would be really cool if you could somehow use this on his own unit, but they don't really need it. Uh, you know, hitting on threes and having that uh, five plus morale and then, you know, technically four with having Khal Drogo on them, for panic at least. Uh, it It's just a, you know, it's tough. Like lead by example, you. I think the the synergy I guess you could get with this is that with that three plus save and five plus morale, um, it's very unlikely that the uh, the blood riders are going anywhere without some really focused effort. So lead by example should be able to reliably go off because you're just going to be around, right? I mean that's the only real like thing I can kind of scrape for with that one. But Adravat and uh, um, Assault Orders are just really great for this unit, and then the rest of it is you know it's cool, but um, you know not it doesn't directly affect the unit. But regardless, they're still just a, a phenomenal unit, and Khal Drogo's everything just works well with them. So just another small detour from what I would normally talk about when reviewing these units is just a little bit of NCU synergy. Um, the normal ones, I think, are for Targaryens, at least the way that I play them, are typically like Illyrio and uh, um, Tycho, just because the healing is so nice for the cavalry. It can really shift the, the way things go, um, being able to get back to that uh, to full ranks again with just a couple uh, bits of healing here and there. So... If you're a person who likes to utilize the healing portion of the Targaryens or the ones that the ones they have available to them, like that's still going to be good here because Blood Riders again hard to move, and uh, being able to restore them back is just going to be great in general. But one of the ones that is a little bit, I don't know if it's out of left field. It's just one that I don't see people playing that often. Is going to be Zaro, Zaro Zohan Daxos, and the reason why I like him in with the Blood Riders is that every single zone that he can get effects on them with are ones that just they do a lot for the blood riders like um you know you you suffer or you you are uh you end up doing more damage through panic which might help your fueled by slaughter um 
you if you're controlling the coin zone after rolling defense dice the unit blocks one hit automatically so they allow you to just kind of make sure that if a couple of those three pluses fail um you can minimize the amount of damage coming in getting plus one attack dies legit too it takes them up to seven or eight seven and that's just pretty that's pretty deadly and then uh with the house of undying you can kind of take the unit that your opponent's putting into them and uh um may you know take a little bit of their uh their offensive power off and i know that um with the new update for 2022 that should be around the corner soon i think a lot more targaryen players are going to be bringing uh pre at pre so it's not going to be super uncommon to see the house of the undying on the table so now we can get into the other portion of this box set, which is all of the Blood Riders in this are considered attachments as well. And they all come in at two points each, and every single one of them has the Blood Rider ability, which just says that um, the unit cannot become weakened, the one that they're attached to. And that does have the heart symbol on it, which means that it can't be stripped off at all. Um, and, you know, that it's nice. It just makes sure that the unit that you're kind of teching for uh, combat is n not going to be affected by any weakened shenanigans. But let's go through these and kind of see what I think of them. So the first one we have is Kaholo, and his ability that he brings is Battle Scars. So um, every time his unit's attacked, you place one order token on him, and then that unit's melee attack gain a an ability based on how many order tokens they have on them. If they've got one, they've got Vicious. If they've got two, they've got Sundering. And if they've got three, they always roll their highest attack die value when determining tack dice. So that sounds really good. Um, you know, we've seen this in Belwaz brings a very similar, if not just the same exact ability. I don't know if his, I think maybe... Maybe I'm, I'm mixing rules up, but I thought that maybe he had some different ones. But um, at any rate, I'm going to keep going. This isn't about Belwaz. But um, the thing that I don't like about this is I feel like he's a little clunky. Every single unit that I would want him on already has one of the abilities that he's bringing in the early part of the game. So like I could see him being on Hedge Knights because they're quite survivable and can take those hits. So, uh, But they already have Sundering Base. So when they get their second... Uh, order token they're not really going to get any use out of it another one that i don't mind this on is the flayed men now i know it makes them like a 10 point unit but uh it's pretty he he would be decent for them if he didn't give if they didn't already have vicious so um i think what you're stuck with is you kind of have to put him into a unit that doesn't have any of those abilities to really get some maximum efficiency out of him and at that point we're kind of losing into the we're getting into these like five plus saves which doesn't it's not the worst thing in the world but you do want to survive multiple attacks and with Koholo I'm it's just a little wonky might be pulling some of the attention away from healing some other units into healing his just to make sure that he can utilize battle scars I'm not completely sold on him as an attachment but I think after I play with him for a while I could see my mind being changed because he could take something like screamers and really turn them up to a really dangerous level for just a small investment of eight points for cavalry which I know is not small but it's it's not terrible Next up, we have Hago, and the, he brings the order to the last. So when this unit's uh, when the, when his unit would be destroyed, uh, you perform a morale test, and then on a success, it is not destroyed but remains in play with one wound, then becomes panicked and vulnerable. So um, this isn't a bad order. Uh, two points means that you can stick this on a pretty pricey or a valuable unit. And just uh, it, most of the things in Targaryens have pretty low morale stats anyway, so you're likely to get this to go off. Um, I don't know how keen I am on spending two points to pay for something in the expectation that it's going to die. Um, there are some units where you're just going to be firing them out and... Uh, sometimes having to the last go off can really throw a wrench in your opponent's gears. They'll end up having to spend a pretty valuable activation that they wouldn't have wanted to normally because they should have killed the unit in the first place. So Hago's another one where um, he has a lot of places he can go, um, but the panicked and vulnerable is something that... Uh, you know, it's not fun to have, but if you only have that one rune, one wound remaining anyways with Targaryen stats, you're not likely going to survive another round anyways. So it really is just kind of a, a two-point, in my opinion, I kind of think of him as a two-point thing to kind of mess with your opponent's plans. Uh, you do have the ability to uh, get them back up to almost full ranks if you're bringing Illyrio. It could be, or not Illyrio, but a uh, Tycho. You could just, like, pop his ability, throw five wounds back into this unit, and then they become dangerous again. So uh, it's not that he's... I don't think he's bad. I just think he's kind of in the middle and takes a few other things to make worth 
worthwhile. But, you know, I could be undervaluing to the last for two points. But, um, you know, that's just my opinion on him, at least right now. So the final of the three Blood Riders is going to be Kotho, and for two points we end up getting Intimidating Presence, which causes enemies engaged with his unit to suffer neg one to their morale test rolls, and then plus one wound from pa failing panic tests. He also brings Prey on Fear, so every time an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test, this unit restores two wounds. So out of all three, out of the, out of the three Drogo Blood Riders, I think I like Kotho the best. But he also has kind of like not the greatest places to go. You would want to—I I would really wanted him to be in flayed men right away, because um, prey on fear is really good for them. But we're doubling down on intimidating presence, and it never feels good when you're putting a unit or unit attachment into a unit and losing out on the points that you're paying by having an additional ability. So even though he would pump those flayed men up to ten points, I don't know if that's—I don't know if prey on fear is worth that. Just that alone, plus the the not being weakened token. I guess it's not bad considering they have critical blow, but or at least when they charge, they have critical blow. But um, Kotho could uh, at least you know take a unit that doesn't have any of these abilities and then kind of turn them into a panic driven uh, unit. Um, or not that they're panic driven, but just that they have some extra benefits to it. But when I'm bringing someone who has these kind of abilities that really target. Um, the failure of morale tests, I would really like them to have some baked-in synergy with this guy first, because just Intimidating Presence and Prey on Fear, I don't know if they're enough to really move the needle on them, but uh, I would, I really, really wish that I could strap this guy to one of the Harakars, like just give him a lion and let him go, because the, both these abilities would be really, really good for something like a Harakar. But Kotho, given all that, I still think he's probably one of my favorite of Drogo's Blood Riders. So, um, you know, just it's tough because, like, I really just wish I could get some get him in a unit that had Vicious or something or could generate their panic or generate panic tokens. And then that would give me just a little bit more of a, I don't know, reprieve or it make me feel better spending the two points on him to put him in a unit that's targeted to do what he wants them to do. Um, so it's it's a bittersweet thing. I think he's one of the best ones. He just doesn't have the best place to go. So now we come up to the final Blood Rider in the box, which is going to, is which he's the one that Khal Drogo replaces when he is in the unit, and that's going to be Rakero. So uh, he ends up bringing two abilities as well for two points. So he has the Order Sentinel. So after another friendly unit in long range is attacked, this unit performs one charge or maneuver action. If charging, uh, he has to target the attacker. He also has Elusive Escape, so this unit re-rolls any retreat distance dice, and then enemy units they disengage from can't pivot and become weakened. So one of the cool things about Rikero is since he's not one of Khal Drogo's original Blood Riders, um, he doesn't have the stipulation that he cannot be included in a list that has Blood Riders in it. And I think that's one of the reasons why I think he's the best attachment in that box, but I also think he's good for other reasons, too. So when we look at the abilities that he brings, the Order Sentinel's really nice. For two points, you're getting kind of a pseudo-activation. Um, you're not, you know, draining the activation economy by increasing, you know, the activations. You're just getting an extra charge, which is just kind of forwarding this really aggressive play style that Khal Drogo could bring if you're bringing him with Khal Drogo. So um, that's just really a really cool thing to have. Uh, I think that that alone would be worth the two points plus the can't be weakened but then elusive escapes really interesting too um i know that it's a huge point sink considering we're already paying eight points for Khal drogo's blood rider unit but elusive escape on the veterans in addition with sentinel just can line you up for some really weird shenanigans and if you're one if you're a person who enjoys taking smaller activation lists that have more tricks to them i think that bringing a blood rider call drogo list with Ricaro in veterans is really interesting and could be really fun for you additionally i know i have a list built with uh, i've been really enjoying playing uh jora and uh i have a unit of veterans in that list with Ricaro in them because Jorah already plays like a really shenanigan heavy list and just putting something like Ricaro with the veterans in there just increases the frustration or the the manipulation that you can uh put on your opponent so uh I don't know I just I love Ricaro so much 
and I think that he's got some really cool techie plays that you can pull, and he's, in my opinion, probably one of the best design ones in this box set, and I think that's uh, that's where I'm going to hang my hat on for best in this box is definitely Recaro for all those fun shenanigan reasons. So I did want to take a moment to talk about my overall feelings in this box set, First of all, I think if you're a Targaryen player, like you you just need to buy this box set. And like and that's not me being like a butt or anything. It's like if you play Khal Drogo, this is the unit he goes in. In very little circumstances, unless you're trying to just play the activation economy and just take a bunch of activations because that's what you want to do, then sure, maybe you don't want to spend eight points on a unit like this, but your commander goes into a unit that's quite survivable and keeps him safe and also forwards his own game plan. So like I can never from the way I build and the way I play this game, I can never see myself not taking the Blood Riders with Khal Drogo. It's just not ever going to happen. That will always be the unit that he sits in. And that is a good and bad thing, I think, because I would like to have the flexibility of being able to put him in another unit for, you know, decent reasons. But for the most part, I just can't find a reason to not put him in Blood Riders. The other thing that makes me, like... A little upset with this box is that we didn't get a second version of Khal Drogo in here. I really do think that instead of getting Rakero, we should have gotten a second commander version of Khal Drogo in this box. And maybe it could have been one where, you know, we've got the the great call where he's like, you know, these are the this is what Khal Drogo is. He's very Dothraki, and this is the type of fighting that they do and the type of prowess that he brings to the list or to the game. And we could have gotten a Khal Drogo that now is a little bit more focused on uh, protecting Daenerys after an attempt on her life or, you know, a little bit more motivated to take a uh, position on a battlefield instead of just kind of ramming, you know, a rocks down people's throats. So I think it was a missed opportunity for this box to have him. It would have been nice to have this more of like a Joffrey style box where we got that commander and maybe we get him as a solo or something like that. Even though like, no, I don't think we could ever get Khal Drogo as a solo because he's never going to follow anyone. It's kind of like how Renly and Stannis will never be their attachments because they're always going to lead the armies. That's just not how they roll. And I think that's how Khal Drogo would, but it was just a you know, a, a slight pipe dream I had there for a moment. Um, one of the other things that I'm not keen on with this box is, first of all, I think um, attachments that are uh, cavalry are in a really weird spot right now because of Expert Duelist. And if you're paying these two points to put a, an attachment into an already expensive cavalry unit, um, it, it really lets your opponent kind of say, I might bring a list that can do two or maybe three. I don't know. Get Three might be a little bit extreme, but for sure you can get two expert duelists in a list quite easily, and they can just target down your really good units that have those attachments. Even Khal Drogo having expert duelist himself doesn't save him from other expert duelists, and that in and of itself makes things very difficult to work with as well. So um, I think that the expert duelist kind of keeps some of these attachments down, but if you're something like, if you're playing them a little bit more maneuverable, like with this Recaro stuff that I keep talking about, then I think you can pretty much keep things safe and uh, and not have to worry too much about it. And if you can get the alpha with Khal Drogo into the units that have expert duelist, then you've got at least your opportunity to try and get their guy before they get yours. It's just only going to happen 66% of the time. So 33% of the time, and then another 66% on top of that, which I don't... My When I stack percentages, my statistics get a little bit off, but I think that's like a coin flip on whether Khal Drogo like, dies after charging someone uh, when they respond in kind. So uh, overall, I do like the Targaryen Heroes 2 box because I really like playing Khal Drogo and I love the Blood Rider unit for him and also Rikero. So if those are the two things that I take away from it, the box is good enough for me. But um, I really hope that in the future the uh, attachments get a look at because I feel like they're just a little clunky or they don't bring abilities that I'm really valuing for that two points in here. So uh, let me know what you think about this box in the comments section below. Uh, maybe let me know if I'm off base or if you kind of feel the same way about it. But I know uh, I, I just found um, the box set at one of my local game stores. So I'm going to I'm picking it up for sure because it's uh, I just can't not play Call Drogo without it.